I confess that I'm a little bit wary when I hear someone introduce themselves as a full stack developer. What do they really mean? It's become a common way for developers to describe themselves these days, but it usually means that they write code that runs in a web browser as well as code that doesn't. I don't think that this is terribly helpful, and as ever, I think that the real picture is a little bit more complicated than that. While I am cautious of the term though, I think that thinking in terms of where our responsibilities as developers start and end is very helpful. But where is the start and where's the end? So today, let's explore what it takes to be a full stack developer. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content today, hit like as well. I'd like to begin by thanking our sponsors, Equal Experts, Octopus, and Specflow. They're all helping us to grow our channel, so please do check their links to support them in return. I have a new training course out at the moment. Uh, early, early feedback is good. Um, please do check it out, test-driven development and BDD design through testing. There's a link in the description below. It seems to me that we have a habit of sometimes hunting for names for things. Are you a T-shaped person, a software generalist, or a full-stack developer? There is an idea, an important idea, at the root of all of these names, but I'm not sure that any of them really nail it. T-shaped means breadth with some depth in specific places. Generalist usually means a functional level of skill and maybe expert, even expertise in a range of useful areas. And full stack seems to mean that you can write JavaScript in the web browser and on a server. Clearly, I'm poking fun at this idea a little bit here. But how, that is how some people seem to describe themselves. Let's just start by getting the tech in the right place when we start thinking about this. It would be naive of me to state that the technology doesn't matter. It clearly does. But as usual, I think it's not the most important aspect. If I can write code in a user interface and I, I, can, and I can write code that supports the UI and define how the data from my service is stored, I don't think that qualifies me as a full stack developer. That's just the basics of programming. I'm not saying that the people who only do these things are unskilled, but if I can write code that takes items from a list in a web page, it's not a very big stretch to be able to write code that can find things in a database. Doing it well may involve more, and that more may qualify you as a full-step developer or not. Do you understand the implications of concurrency in your system? Have you thought about the impact on scalability of your design choices? Are you working in ways that make it easy to revisit and add or to improve your code in future? Simply crossing layers isn't enough for me, at least. I admit my description is a little bit more vague and less technology focused, but if we only focused on the tech, where do we draw the line? Where does the stack start and where does it end? Is it the operating system? Is it the platform? Is it a related collection of frameworks, perhaps? Is it the servers? Do we need to know assembler and be able to write firmware and device drivers too? Are the transistors in the chips that we use part of the stack too? I hope you see my point. I think at one point, full stack used to mean something closer to this extreme end of the spectrum. I've worked at places where that kind of full stack viewpoint mattered. These days, for most of us though, that's probably taking things too far. So the technology isn't really enough on its own to draw a useful boundary. Despite all of this, I think that there is something useful in the idea of full stack, something that matters, something that's at root defines how we think about and organize ourselves to create great software. Do we divide our work up into technical specialities or do we divide work some other way? As usual, this is probably more complicated than it seems. The problem here is that inevitably, as human beings, we're going to have different skills, interests and experience. 
If you have spent most of your career working on code that only communicates via APIs, you're probably not very skilled at writing attractive, effective graphical user interfaces. If you've only ever worked on graphical user interfaces, you probably lack the skills to define a scalable data store. This is pretty obvious, and in a field as big and complex as ours, there's a huge amount to learn, and nobody is an ex expert in everything. The classic response to this problem is to divide work up along the lines of expertise of the people. This seems like a very obvious thing to do. The goal is to allow us to make the best use of the skills of those people. The trouble is that this only seems like a good idea. In reality, it's not. The problem is that ours is a creative discipline. And while it's certain that we need a range of skills and expertise to do good things, dividing work up into a series of expertise-shaped silos is pretty close to death for the creation of great software. Dividing work up into different technical specialities is a big mistake. It builds barriers between those specialisms, forcing them to start thinking about the problem with a small, narrow focus, rather than the broad laser focus on outcomes that seems essential to the production of great work to me. It slows the development process and limits the growth of the people involved too. One of the things that we all often forget that is fundamentally true of software development is that it's a creative act. We are always creating new things. They may not necessarily be globally unique or profoundly innovative, but they're always new to us in some form, because if they weren't, we'd simply clone the bytes that we had solved this problem with before. Ours is never a problem of production. We can always clone the bytes, essentially for free. Rather, ours is always an act of creation. Imagine writing a song if the back-end composer was only allowed to use the white keys on the piano and the front-end composer could only use the black keys. It's ludicrous. I recently watched Peter Jackson's movie based on the documentary recordings of the Beatles. Whether you like the Beatles or not, this was a weirdly comp compelling insight into their creative process. You would hear one of them sketch an idea for a song and vaguely recognise it as a classic. Then they'd work on it, bringing different skills and insights to the process, until they ended up with a complete song, one of the classics that nearly all of us have heard. This is very close to what I've seen in all of the best teams that I've worked with. Not everyone on the team may be full stack. Some of us are lyricists, some of us are drummers, but the team needs to be full stack. That is, you need all the skills to create good software in a small group of people working closely together. If the team is too big, the communications overhead will not allow the necessary collaboration. We need the equivalent of George Harrison seeing a change in the lyrics that makes him think about how to modify his guitar solo to make the song overall better. No one tells him to. No one hands him completed lyrics before he starts work on his guitar parts. Creativity is more dynamic, more collaborative, more complex than that. Not everyone on the team is equally broadly skilled. Paul McCartney played bass, guitar, piano and wrote most of the songs. He also directed the band, at least in the sessions in this movie. He even plays the drums at one point. He isn't very good as a drummer, but he knows enough to demonstrate an idea, and he knows enough to have an informed opinion of how the drums should fit into his songs. These kinds of people are extremely useful, even if they aren't all songwriting or software geniuses. The ability to hold a holistic picture in mind and help other people to see it and collectively, collaboratively navigate towards it, changing direction as new ideas arise, has been a hallmark of the great teams that I have seen. Ringo Starr was more of a specialist. He largely just played the drums. He did contribute in other ways. He wrote lyrics, but we never see him play the guitar and he needed help to move from lyrics to a complete song. As an individual, he brought necessary skills to the team, but was probably a bit less full stack as an individual than the others. I think that this idea of a full stack team is an important one. 
The Google Dora results say that significant predictors of high scores in stability and throughput, which measure the quality of our work and the efficiency with which we can deliver work of that quality, is the ability of the team to make progress without calling on people from outside the team. So the team needs to be full stack in the context of their work. The slippery words here are in the context of their work. How do we decide on that context? The mistaken traditional approach is to divide the work up so that the context of their work aligns with the technical skills. And now we're back to where we started. It's like focusing only on the drumming and forgetting that the goal is to create a song. You aren't going to end up with let it be that way. Our creative goal is to deliver some desirable outcome to our users. We want to create software that helps them do something useful or helpful or fun. When we lose sight of that, we produce bad software. So we need small, creative, collaborative, full stack teams working on something that they understand and that delivers value to their users. This puts limits on how we can sensibly organize to deliver. It rules out anything other than full stack teams for most cases, in my opinion. But I have cheated. We've started talking about full stack developers and I switched to full stack teams. So how do we populate these full stack teams? As a minimum, I think that you need at least one or two people who consciously try to maintain that broad view that we spoke about earlier. Their job is to keep their eye on the ball and not lose sight of the reality that the outcome matters and that everything else serves that. The ball may be moving. It almost certainly is. But they are good enough to be able to keep track of it and understand the implications uh, in sometimes unexpected ways of where the target is at at any given point in the life of the system. The problem is that this outcome focus is extremely complicated. Sure, you need to focus on the value as customers may perceive it, and that's not clear-cut, simple thing to do even there. But as software developers, we also need to think about the things that they, our users care about but often don't think of for themselves. Security, maintainability, scalability, performance, and all of those other issues that can make or break our systems. So the second part of my definition of full stack is that a full stack developer takes responsibility for how their system is perceived and works in production in some way. It's not enough to only write back-end code or only front-end code. It's not enough to only write both. To my mind, full stack has little meaning unless we are using our knowledge of all of the parts of our system and the context in which it operates to think about our system holistically. Uh, if I add this service, does it compromise security? If I delete this database, can people still carry on doing useful work? For me, full stack means people thinking about the big picture as well as understanding the small. If I can write a 50-line CRUD application in Python that accesses a relational database, I don't think that makes me a full stack developer. If I can make a decision on whether to implement a new feature in the UI, server side, or as a clever database design perhaps, and still keep my system running and performing, that's full stack to me. Like all of us, I'm a victim of my experience. I see the world in the context of the teams that I've worked on and work with now, and the work that I do. One of my difficulties is where do we draw the line? There's been a quiet but long-running debate about the nature of programming. Is it all one thing or not? Is the world made up of heroic full-stack programmers on one side who build operating systems, tools, and big complicated systems from scratch, and narrower, less skilled people on the other hand who assemble useful systems by assembling software like Lego bricks and writing glue between the bricks? Well, yes and no. I think that the reality of many developers' experience is that their work is mostly writing code that glues parts together. This is true whether we are an expert developer and technologist or a low-code developer building some simple application. If I am writing an operating system, I'm relying on tools and compilers that somebody else built. 
and linking together libraries of code that they supplied. Then there is the commercial imperative. The industry, whatever that means, needs lots of programmers. And not every programmer is or needs to be a computer science genius. More than that, different people have different interests and different goals. If one programmer is interested in building beautiful, effective user interfaces and another loves the intricacies of writing device drivers, then great, we need both of those things. So all of us are consumers and users of other people's software. But on the other hand, if it's not very scalable, if the person building a low-code system needs to understand the fine-grained detail of modern processor architecture or the best way to architect large-scale large cloud-based systems. The problem that interests me is that there seem to be commonalities between those groups and across the spread. Shared experience in the work of software development, development, whether they are working with very abstract tools, floating on top of a huge stack of software, or down in the guts. As long as we focus only on the tools, whether in a stack or not, rather than our real job of solving problems with software for our users, we will continue to miss the important stuff that helps us to do better work. Part of that important stuff is what I described earlier. Whatever our tool set, full stack means that everything we do is focused on making stuff that our users find useful. And our job is to bring our skills, expertise, experience, as well as our tools to bear to achieve that. If you are a great software developer, you'll do a better job with whatever tools you're using. The flip side to this, though, is that whatever tools you are using, you're never very far away from choices that, if you get them wrong, will have serious bad implications for your system. Software is almost by definition about abstraction. The problem with abstractions is that they leak. And software is slippery enough that working in ways that insulate you from the bad choices that at some point you will inevitably make, however good you are, and however far up the stack you are, is the real hallmark, not just of a full stack developer, but of a good one too. Thank you very much for watching.